Maddie, and today I'm looking through all of these toys. This one is my favourite. It's a spinning top. What's your favourite toy? The other thing I like to play with is this train set. It's really fun. It's got tracks, people, and even houses. But first, I need to put it together. Ta-da! But no train set is complete without a train. And every train needs a carriage. What happened there? Shall we see it again? Let's add some more carriages. Blue one. Green one. Did you see how the carriages attach together? That's because of magnets. These little silver dots, those are the magnets. And when you put the carriages together, they stick, which means you can pull the train around the track like this. Oh. Whee, under the bridge. <laughs> and when you're finished playing with the train, you just pull the carriages apart and the magnets become unstuck like this. But do you know how magnets work? Let's find out. How does it work? Like magnets. Magnets are made of metal and they're really fun to play with. Look what happens when you put two magnets together like this. It feels like they're pulling towards each other until eventually, snap, they pull together. Did you hear the snap sound the magnets made? But look what happens if I turn this carriage the other way round and use this magnet instead. No matter how hard I try to push them together, they just don't want to connect. This time it feels like they're pushing away from each other. Why does this happen? On the end of each train carriage are magnets. They look the same but are actually different. Every magnet has two sides called poles. One side is called the North Pole and the other side is called the South Pole. And the whole magnet is surrounded by an invisible area called a magnetic field. When a North Pole magnet goes into the magnetic field of a South Pole magnet, they're pulled together. But when you turn them around so that the South Poles face each other, the magnetic field pushes them away. And the same happens if all the North Poles face each other. Only the opposites. A North and a South Pole will pull the magnets together. So although the magnets look the same, they're not. And it's only when the opposite, the North and South Pole, are put near each other, do you feel the pulling and snap, they come together. If you turn the magnet the other way round, so the poles are the same, instead, you feel the magnets pushing away from each other. Oh, and look, it's actually moving the train all by itself. So that pulling you feel is the magnetic field around the magnet starting to work. And this is called a magnetic force. But to show you how strong a magnetic force can really be, I've got some other magnets to show you. Here I've got two magnets. This one has North and South Pole clearly marked. North is the red side and South is the blue side. I've also got this little silver magnet, but I don't know which side is which. But there's one way we can find out. Did you see that? 
the two magnets pulled together. So that means this side of the silver magnet must be south because south and north poles will pull together. But it all happened really quickly, didn't it? I filmed this in super slow motion. Take a look. Look, as the magnets get close to each other, the magnetic fields start to work, pulling the opposite poles together. These little silver magnets are actually really strong. Now watch what happens when I run the north and south pole magnet over the top. Whoa! It looks like magic, doesn't it? That is so much fun. That's amazing. The magnetic force is so strong, it's making the little silver magnets jump high in the air to stick to the North Pole. I loved seeing how magnets worked. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember what you call the two ends of the magnet? That's right, they're called the North Pole and the South Pole. Did you hear the sound the magnets made when they came together? It was a big snap. And did you see the way the magnets jumped up high in the air when the North and South Poles were pulled together? I finished with my train set, so it's time to put it away in the toy box. But look, here is Teddy. Hello, Teddy. Do you have a teddy bear? Oh, they're lovely and soft, aren't they? But do you know how a teddy bear is made? Let's find out. How is it made? A teddy bear. Well, I'm here in a big teddy bear shop. Just look how many teddy bears there are. There are lots of different types of teddy bear. Today we're going to see how a teddy bear, just like this one, is made. Hello, Teddy. <laughs> and making a teddy bear all starts with the fur. This teddy's fur is made from something called mohair, which comes from a goat, a type of goat called an angora goat. <laughs> Next to the teddy bear shop is the teddy bear factory. And these are all the rolls of mohair. There are so many different colors. This is Ian, and Ian's going to cut out the shape of the new teddy bears in the mohair using this big machine. Ian uses a different cutter for each part of the teddy bear, and he's starting with the teddy bear's heads. It's like a giant set of biscuit cutters, and he uses the big machine as a press. Here we are, and look. Can you see the little holes here and here? That's where the teddy bear's eyes are going to go. Next, Ian cuts out some teddy bear bodies. And then he cuts out some arms and legs. Because each teddy bear has two arms and two legs, Ian puts one layer of mohair on top of the other so that when he starts cutting, he gets two of everything. So this will become two teddy bear legs. When all the pieces have been cut out, they're taken to the next part of the factory, the sewing area. This lady here is sewing the teddy bear arms and legs, and that lady is sewing the teddy bear heads. All of these pieces have been sewn. We have arms, legs, and a body. But can you see that the fur is on the inside? That's because teddy bear parts are sewn inside out so that when they're turned the right way out, all of the stitching is hidden. So the next stage is for all of these pieces to be turned the right way out. And look at this arm now. The fur is on the outside and the stitching is hidden on the inside. So we have two arms, two legs and a body, but there's one part missing. Do you know what it is? That's right, it's the head. But before the head is turned the right way out, it needs a pair of eyes. The eyes are made of plastic and just look at all of them here. Don't they look funny staring back at us? 
Each eye is popped through the small hole in the teddy bear's head, and then Sharon uses a special tool to pick up a bit of plastic called a washer, and then she uses the tool to push the washer over the eye, and it fixes it in place. And now, if we turn this teddy's head the right way round, you can see the eyes. It's beginning to look like a teddy bear, isn't it? But all of these parts are really flat. This wouldn't make a very cuddly teddy bear, would it? But that's because they need to be stuffed. All of this white fuzzy material is teddy bear stuffing, and it's made from something called polyester. Let's use my special camera to take a closer look. But where is my special camera? Oh, here it is. This is a microscope and it helps us to see really, really tiny things. This is what the polyester stuffing looks like in close up. Look at that, you can see all of the little hairs, can't you? It feels really soft, but actually, under the microscope, the little hairs look quite wiry. Looks a bit like noodles, doesn't it? But how do we get this stuffing inside a teddy bear? Can you hear the sound the stuffing machine is making? It sounds like a balloon being blown up. And here we have one stuffed teddy leg. It feels nice and squishy now. So we have the flat body, stuffed arms, legs and head. But before all of these can be joined together, something really clever happens. And that's because these teddy bears have something called joints. You have joints in your body. You have joints at the top of your arms called shoulders and joints at the top of your legs called hips and they mean you can move like this. And our teddy is going to have arms and legs which can move in the same way. The teddy bear joints are made with long pins which are sewn into the head, arms and legs. The pins are then attached to the body and fixed into place. Then it's time to fill up the body with stuffing. And here's Teddy, but he's got a hole in his back and he's missing his nose and his mouth. All of these get sewn over here. There we go. Much better. Now the fur is given a good brush, then it's time for a trim, and no teddy bear leaves the factory without a ribbon. There we go, Teddy. Looking good. One last important check. Yes, you are lovely and cuddly. I really loved seeing how a teddy bear was made. What was your favourite bit? Do you remember what the teddy's fur is made of? That's right, it's mohair. Did you hear the sound of the stuffing machine made when it filled the teddy up? And did you see what the stuffing looked like close up when I used my special camera? So the next time you play with a teddy bear, you'll know how lots of teddies are made and how they get to be so cuddly. And now you know how magnets work and how they stick the carriages of a toy train together. Right, Teddy, it's time we're off. I'll see you next time.